The title of this story is Rain School by James Rumford. We will be thinking as we are reading this, how can weather affect us? We're going to read about a school that has to be rebuilt every year. Um, this is one of my favorites to read together in the class each year as we finish up the school year. And I think that you will find it a, a favorite of yours as well. It takes place in Chad, which is in Central Africa. So if you have um, access to a map at home, a world map, you can let someone help you to see where that, um, that this takes place. In the country of Chad, <clears throat> it is the first day of school. The dry dirt road is filled up with children. Big brothers and big sisters are leading the way. As we look at this picture, we can think about some of the uh, differences of how that uh, we get to school on the first day of school and um, some of the things that might be similar. Um, one thing we usually talk about is how that most of the time uh, we have on shoes when we go to school and they do not have on shoes when they are as they're walking to school. Uh, we do not um, walk to school at our school. A lot of there are some schools that uh, have that are in located in the middle of a, a community and the children may be able to walk to school. But our school, we have to ride a car or we have to ride a school bus to get to school. So, so those are some of the um, things we normally talk about during this story. Uh, also, we've talked this year about visualizing closing our eyes and getting a good picture in our mind of what's going on in the picture. And if you do that, you can um, think about a dirt road with the dirt being very dry. And as you walk, there's dust everywhere. Um, we have also talked about cause and effect. And to find the cause, I think about why they're walking on the road. And I read it. It's the first day of school. The first day of school is the cause for the children to be walking on the road because they are walking to school. Will they give us a notebook? Thomas asked. Will they give us a pencil? Will I learn to read like you? Stop asking so many questions and keep up, said the big brothers and big sisters. So as we read this page, we think, does it why would Tom be, Thomas be asking all of these questions? I would think he looks smaller. This could be his first year going to school. When you started school or even start a new grade, you always have those questions. Who will be in my room? What will my teacher be like? Those type of things. And never would we have asked the question, would we stop going to school for a period of time like we have this year? So sometimes there are those unknowns that we don't even see. Thomas arrives at the schoolyard, but there are no classrooms. There are no desks. It doesn't matter. There is a teacher. We will rebuild our school, she says, and this is the first lesson. How many of you are thinking, oh, that would be so much fun. Almost like putting some big Legos together to try to put the school together. And they're all small children. Some are big that the story has told us. But we also have some that I would think their age would be kindergarten. How are they going to help build the school? So many questions but the teacher seems to be very happy to see them and very positive that they're going to be able to build the school. So let's move forward and see. Thomas learns to make mud bricks and dry them in the sun. We learned that Thomas was very young in the first part. We thought that it's possibly his first time at school because he was asking so many questions. Um, this is a common thing in Africa, the uh, orphanage that um, my family is connected with, built their 
orphanage and they had to make the bricks out of the clay and dry them in the sun to be able to build the building. So this is a common thing for countries that do not have um, materials that they can go to the store and buy like we do, but they have to be very creative and they have to make their own. He learns to build mud walls and mud desk. Wow, look at all the different children and all the different things that they are doing. You have some that are on the roof and they're building the roof. And then you have the smaller children and it looks like they are making the bricks and they are drying the bricks and laying them out so that the other children can stack them up to build the school. He gathers grass and saplings with the other children and they make a roof. As we are reading, we see that this school is made out of different materials than our school is made out of. Their roof is made out of a straw and um, they are putting that on the roof. And our, we, our schools have uh, shingles, some that are um, metal and sometimes that are just made out of some tar material. Um, but we do not have, our schools are not made like this, but again, remember that this is in a different part of the world. Inside, it is cool. It smells of earth. It smells of the fields ready for planting. Thomas helps bring in little wooden stools. Everyone sits down. This is the moment they have been waiting for. How do you think they feel about their school? I would think they have a lot of pride because they helped to put it together and they are so excited now that they have all of their desk and their stools and they have their, the whole building is made. And so now they can start to learn. The teacher brings in a blackboard and on it she writes a letter A. A says the teacher. A says Thomas with the other children. The teacher writes the letter with big strokes in the air. The students do the same over and over. Wonderful says the teacher. This is something that you will find familiar because this is the way we practiced our letters at the beginning of first grade and you practiced your letters in kindergarten as we were learning to write them the correct way and learning to form them. And the teacher at this school is doing much the same as we are. She hands out notebook, notebooks and pencils. Page one, says the teacher. Thomas opens his notebook to the first page and holds his pencil ready and waiting. Now write the letter A. Beautiful, says the teacher as she looks at the student's work. So she is grading the student's work, similar to me grading the student's work. Every day, Thomas learns something new, and every day the teacher cheers him and the other children on. Excellent job, she says. Perfect, my learning friends. Now, she has a, a map of Africa on the desk, and she is showing them where that they are located on the map of Africa, like I had asked you to do at the beginning of this story. The nine months of school year fly by. The last day of school has come. The students' minds are fat with knowledge and their notebooks are rumpled from learning. Thomas and the other children call out, thank you, teacher. She smiles and says, well done, my hardworking friends. See you next year. Thomas and the other children race home. 
Now we do notice that there are lots of ages in this one classroom, and we have talked about that being the way that schools used to be a long time ago, but in some countries, this is the way school still is. At the orphanage that we are, um, uh, that we are connected with in Africa, these children learn similar to this. They will have many ages in one in the same room and they will all be learning different things the teacher will be teaching them um, something different but they'll all be in the same room the school is empty and just in time big rains have started the drops come down hard and fast and strong winds tear at the grass roof the rain finds its way inside and the school's mud walls are soaked and start to slump, and the mud desk too. I always find that, um, that this is sad. They've worked so very hard, and now the building is being torn down by the rain. We see that the heavy rain is the cause for the mud walls to get soaked and fall down. The, what effect does this have on the school building? And we see that it is not going to stand any longer. Slowly, the school disappears until there is almost nothing left. It doesn't matter. The letters have been learned and the knowledge taken away by the children. This always brings a tear to my eye because the building, even though the building is gone, the children have learned so many things that they've got to take away with them from the school. Just like you have this year, although we are not in our normal school building and in our normal classroom, you have still learned so many things and taken so many things away by working hard with our online schooling. Come September, school will start over. Thomas will be a big brother then, leading the children on their first day to school. They will all stand in front of their smiling teachers, ready to build their school again. I love the end of this story because although we've not been in school for the last several months, come fall, we will all be ready to walk in those doors and start learning the way that we learned before we left. But I feel that we have gained a lot from our experience of being doing online school. I have seen uh, how I can be a teacher that I did not think that I could through online and I have seen how that you have learned and you have uh, gained a lot of knowledge through the online learning and I'm very thankful for that.